Hello y'all, I'm here to give y'all a little bit of story time. Annoy the face. I am in desperate need of a chemical pill to help smooth out this face. Uh, you know, trans problems. I hate during one having this, you know, texture right here on my face. Ugh. Like no matter how much I shave or whatnot, I still have this clockable area. Oh, it's getting on my nerves, so... I want to try to do a chemical peel on myself, a professional grade peel, and see if that might suffice. I also just got finished doing a failed chemical delipitary attempt uh, for the very first time. For the first and last time. I would just darn on try to find somebody to wax me instead. But yeah, y'all ain't come here for that. Y'all came here for the story time. Uh, Freaky Friday segments are back. I've been going through quite the issues with my job or whatnot. Um, down to the McAllisters. Um, between that, searching for a new place to stay. Um, also trying to get my surgeries and stuff. Um, I have not had time to be consistent with the Freaky Friday videos and the story times. But here we go. So this is being filmed at the end of the month. And y'all will be seeing it at the end of the first week of April. Because I'm going to save it for next Friday. Because obviously it's going to be too late to upload it tonight. <laughs> um, or what not. Because it's 11.30 something right now. But anyways. The time that I almost made out with my cousin. <laughs> yeah. Y'all heard right. And we ain't talking about a third or fourth or fifth cousin. We're talking about my first cousin. As in, his father is my uncle, and my father is his uncle. Like, yeah, that close of a cousin. Now, how did we get here? Rewind to the egg donor, who y'all know as the demon. Uh, she had me under the false belief, right, that my oldest brother's father who she never raised her child past the age of four, lived in Maryland. So that's why y'all don't really hear me talk about my brother because we don't have a relationship. Um, I was pretty much raised as an only child by my grandmother and great-grandmother and my aunts um, because, you know, my you know egg donor strung out on cocaine. Um, father, who I thought was my father, is not necessarily absentee because... He's raising my older brother and the one that's my biological father, I didn't find out until I was 18. Although there was talks by the time I was 10 that I looked at like the other person in question because of my strong facial features. So much so where I get stopped on the street by total strangers that don't even know my maternal side and ask about the paternal side of my family that I've never met to this day. Now it gets even more um, complex because... My first cousin on my maternal side also is my cousin on my paternal side as well. <laughs> I know that's weird. Now, granted, it ain't no incestuous situation there. Because I was like, how is he related on my maternal and paternal? I was like, this is some soap opera type-ish. So you're my cousin on my father's side and you're my cousin on my egg donor side as well? But somehow... You know, the, the whoever hooked up with who, they're not genetically related. It just worked out where this person is, you know, related. I, I'm related to them on both sides. Yeah, weird, right? It makes for some soap opera type-ish. But neither here nor there. This ain't about his ancestry. This is about mine. So, I did not know this time. I did not, like I said, I did not find out until I was 18. Everybody intentionally left me in the dark. Now, the dangers of that is... You know, me obviously being in proximity of fellow black people, I'm going to naturally gravitate towards blackness, right? Most people tend to darn going like their own race of people first. Now, I'm somebody that don't mind dating openly. Um, and at the time, I was getting into solely dating white people for a whole nother issue because I grew up in a very notorious gang-infested, drug-infested area. So all the examples of black men were not ideal examples that I wanted to get with. Um, so, by default, I always, you know, shun myself off from black people. Now, I've never fully 
you know, ostracized, you know, because every guy that I fought, have fallen in love with has been black. So, I have not cut myself off permanently to black men, but as far as, like, hooking up, it was just white guys. But it was this one boy who was, um, well, is, um, my older cousin's best friend. And here's the nuance with this. The one that I call my older cousin is not genetically related to me, but I grew up with him under the guise of my cousin. Now, here goes how this situation goes down. Now, I consider him my cousin, right? Because we share the same uncle. Like, um, this person's uh, mother is my uncle's sister. My uncle and my aunt have the same father but the egg donor and the aunt doesn't so since my uncle and my egg donor have different fathers and my the one that i consider still like an aunt shares dna with the paternal side of my uncle who i am not genetically related to as far as the you know their father um because once again i'm connected through my grandmother my egg donor and my uncle share the same mother, but they have different fathers, if that makes sense. So, since my aunt, her, she's related to my uncle by way of their father, that makes them not technically genetically related to me. But still, I consider them my aunt and my cousins nonetheless, even though there's theoretically not no blood tied there. But anyways, I still grew up as uh, and i still recognize him as my cousin to this day but the irony was and there's like a five-year age difference between us he's like five years older than me his um friend is about four or five years older than me um uh, i was 13 and as i was visiting um the friend hit it on me at one time and it even got to the point where it, he actually gave me a kiss on the lips a little bit so he was my first kiss this is weird, like, my first, my cousin is my darn on first darn on romantic kiss. And I felt so awkward because I was 13. I wasn't really, now granted, I was just coming into puberty and whatnot. Uh, he was attractive. I, I, well, I guess he is because he might still be fine to this day. I don't know, but he's essentially chocolate. Like, y'all know I'm like milk chocolatey complexion. For color reference, I'm like... Uh, I'm a tad bit lighter than Kelly Rowland. Uh, I, I'm I'm like I'm right in between Gabrielle Union and Kelly Rowland for a color reference. Um, foundation Fenty shade 430. Um, also can wear shade 445. So that's where I'm at on the color spectrum. He would be more like a shade 470 or 480 in Fenty. Like he's very deep chocolatey complexion um not necessarily as dark as nima tang if you if y'all are familiar with makeup uh folks not necessarily the pizza Nyong'o dark but he's about he, he's about there like he's black complected but he's a deep black but not like a pitch black if that makes sense real rich chocolatey complexion and he had these beautiful white pearly teeth like movie star teeth and whatnot and I was mesmerized. The perfect manicure afro. It was giving me like a chocolate Micah Jazz. <laughs> so it was like this 17 year old is darn going to flirt with me. And once again, I'm a fat bitch, honey. I'm a, I'm a chubby darn going kid or whatnot. So I'm just darn going smitten and darn going don't know what to do, honey. So I get a little peck on the darn going cheek, right? And he just left me on mesmerized or whatnot. <laughs> Uh, I think my cousin, my the one that I actually called my cousin, caught on and shut it down <laughs> before it went further. Because Lord knows, oh God. Now that would have been for, oh, when I tell you, honey, I, I might would have been on first 48. If we actually would have done something only to find out that is my first cousin. Not no third, not no fourth, not no fifth, but my first cousin. When I tell you that's some soap opera type ish right there, it really is. And to this day, she don't necessarily know. But the fact is, she, she shouldn't have to know. Because it's like, the thing is this. I should have darn gone known 
who my real paternal father was so something like that wouldn't happen. So here I am almost done a committed incest by no fault of my own because I done a, got pursued by this hot dog on boy, 17 year old sculpted rich chocolate black man. And you know, come to find out he's my first cousin. Now I know y'all saying, well, why, well, isn't there some similarities there? Now I think about it, we do have some similar facial features and stuff, but hell, I wouldn't have thought to even think like that because it's like, I'm under the belief that this person is my darn gonna fight. And now look, and I was like, well, I don't look nothing like him. I don't look nothing like my darn going older brother at all. Matter of fact, my older brother is very deep chocolatey complexion as well, like pitch black complexion and all of that, different facial features and everything else. Me, I have a thin nose, a, th a super thin nose, cheekbones, uh, where else he has a wider nose and, you know, like I said, very deep, dark skin um, or whatnot. Hair textures are totally different and everything. Like, we don't have no similarities at all. <laughs> Which is even weird considering that we still share the same egg donor. You would think there would be some resemblance there, but no. I, I, I obviously took a majority after this darn going paternal person who everybody knows but me. And that adds a whole nother dilemma. Because um, this person is a rolling stone. Everywhere he laid his D was his home for the night. Turns out I got like 10 siblings. Now, granted, the person who I thought was my father, he has multiple children by multiple women as well. So, I, I thought I had about five, six plus siblings any damn way that I've never met that are all, like, older than me. And I'm the youngest. Come to find out, I still may be the youngest. I don't know. Because knowing, hell, I might be, like, somewhat in the middle because I don't know necessarily know how many children this darn person has. I still to this day have not met my biological father. And the disrespect of it is he's in the same city as me. Now, it's like the one who I thought was my father actually went out his way and came all the way down from Maryland and managed to meet me. Now, granted, it, it took him till it was I was 28 years old. And he didn't necessarily come down for me. He came down to surprise the egg donor for her birthday, her 50th birthday. Oh, wait a minute. That was five years ago. Because she's 55 now. So, ooh. That was 2018. Damn, the time flies by. So, I was, oh, I was 25. I don't know why I thought I was 28. Okay, so I was 25 when I met him for the first time in my knowing life. Because... Once again, this is somebody I didn't see past the age of two, so didn't have no memory of him at all or whatnot. Um, found found out about them on Facebook when I went searching um, when I was 18. Um, had some brief contacts over the phone, but, you know, we didn't have no smartphone or anything. We didn't know nothing about FaceTime. Yeah, we in the South, we didn't have no concept. Of, <laughs> we, was to, we was totally behind the curve, y'all. Yeah, we were still using the flip phone even back, the, even, you know, as late as the uh, 20 teens. Um, or we had the we had the, uh, the Blackberry when people was having the, uh, the Samsungs and stuff. We was that behind. So, yeah, we didn't have no concept of FaceTime or nothing like that. Um, so, even with that, it will still be many years later before I've seen the person in person. Um, but like I said, the damage was already done to the point where even when they came down, they stayed a whole week. I didn't have no communication with either one of them. I didn't have a communication with, uh, who thought, who I thought was my father, nor my older brother to this day. Um, uh, now I know what initiated me not having no communication with my brother. I don't know why he maintained not talking to me though, cause I was petty. Um, and I, I mentioned that in another video, what caused me not to talk to him. It, it's something extremely petty that now that I think about it, should not. Because I was the one that actually initiated not talking. He actually, you know, initiated trying to build a relationship. I shut it down. So, it wasn't due to no homophobia and hell. They don't even know that I'm trans. So, <laughs> it don't got nothing to do with any transphobia either. So, 
yeah, that's that on that. But I say all that to say, this is why it's important for people to have genetic darn going testing done. Ancestry would darn going reveal some hell of an information because what made me even finally get, because people always threw out those hints for years that I look like this man, I look like this man, I don't look like this person. It wasn't until I got the ancestry test. Also, when I was in high school, I I, I, I somewhat knew. Um, because I, I knew that I was a blood type O. And only O parents can make an O baby. So, the fact that this person is a B, negative, the rarest blood type, and I'm an O positive, O-R-H positive, I was like, okay, that, that, that confirms it right there. That obviously, <laughs> you're not my darn gone father. The other person is, who is in Fayetteville, who got 10 different, 10 plus different children, which I think I should darn on. It's like, if you don't want a relationship with me, that's fine and dandy. But I think it should be an obligation that I should at least be made primitive to who my siblings is. Because God forbid if any of this happens again, because I don't necessarily know what brothers that. Now, I've heard about the darn going daughters. I mean, the daughters he have. So it's like, and I, for obvious reasons, we don't have to worry about no type of hookup situation with that, honey. I'm, I'm strictly dickly over here. So I don't necessarily have to worry about that, thank goodness. Um, but as far as like, Lord knows, don't don't tell me I have any trans attracted brothers. Because that, that could make for a horrific situation as well. So it's like, this is why it pays to darn going, know your darn going folks or whatnot. So where do I go from here? Um, I'm thinking as I get my situation together, as far as, you know, my surgeries and all of that, I might go ahead and splurge and get a private investigator since everybody wants to keep this darn on person away from me. And this person ain't made no attempts. And it's like Fayetteville, North Carolina ain't but so big. And it's like, even when I reached out to his family members, because I can't even consider them my family because it's like, I ain't got no darn going tie to y'all. Like, y'all don't talk to me on the phone or anything. Now, when I took Ancestry, I was matched with, you know, first and second cousins uh, from my paternal side. I talked with them a couple times on the phone. And I know they've reached out to the person and made it known that I was trying to, you know, build a, uh, you know, a relationship of sorts. And nothing happened. I managed to find his Facebook some years ago as well. Back when I was in beauty school, um, only for him to seem he had communication with my uncle, but did not get in contact with me. Um, he owns numerous properties all around me. Now, this, see, this is the ultimate disrespect. It, it, because it's like, it would be one thing if you lived in a whole different state. It would be one thing if you was pissed broke and you just couldn't afford. No, I couldn't even darn going to give you a pass if you was broke because the phone is free. Hell, even through the uh, government, you can get a free darn on cell phone. So it's, it's no excuse not to be able to reach out in any capacity. But for my biological father to be a millionaire from what I'm hearing, he's uh, he's done professional race car driving. Um, he owns numerous properties um, to the point where he's giving all my other siblings darn on houses just like that. Oh, you, okay, here's a house for you. Oh, here's a $20,000 car for you. Here's a $25,000 car for you. And it's like, you don't necessarily owe me that or nothing. Um, I can't necessarily hold you accountable for being absent in my life because, hell, the egg donor darn gone made it <laughs> where, you know, you didn't have no reason to believe that I was your child for the first 18 years of my life. So I, I don't fault him for being absent as, a, a you know, throughout my life or whatnot but it's like from 18 onwards yeah you're not legally obligated to be in my life but i still think you know it's rather fucked up that you don't even so much as see me in person like or if they did see me they might have saw me from a distance which i think is even more disrespectful so you have the leniency of being able to know who i am from a distance but I, if I was to pass by you, I don't necessarily know who you is because I, I only got a picture of you from 30-some years ago as a reference. So it's like... I 
this is my doggone effed up situation, y'all. Um, I just wanted to sneak that story time in as well. So y'all getting a two for one. Y'all getting um, how I accidentally um, got kissed by my... Well, actually, it wasn't an accident that he kissed me. But the fact is, if we knew we were first cousins, that shit would have never happened. Um, number one. Um, number two is from the time that this person knew that I was um, his child or whatnot. It's like the fact that there was no attempts made. And it made me feel like weird for the longest. I was like, well, damn, what did I do? And at first I thought, well, maybe it's because at the time I thought, you know, because I'm gay or whatnot. Uh, because they don't know, none of the folks know that I'm trans. So it's like you can't darn say because I'm trans because, hell, I, I've only been officially transitioning for 10 months now. Now, granted that people have been identifying me as she for about 10 years. Um, and I get mistaken for she um, for the most part um, for the past three years now. I've been semi-passable um, for the most part. Like if my voice ain't, you know, super deep or whatnot, so if I got my curls, um... You know, if people ain't paying attention to the lack of... T well, you know, now I got a little bit of cleavage. The cleavage don't give... Me, you know, my flat chest don't necessarily give me away. Because I do got a little bit of cleavage now. But back when I was flat chested, people didn't pay attention to that. Surprisingly, people didn't even pay attention to the Adam's apple or whatnot. Um, I don't... <laughs> I guess what, what clocked me is when I wore my actual hair out and I had the male pattern baldness. That was the identifier surprisingly for a lot of people and then the fact that i wear a size you know 12 and a half male shoe so no and i'm six foot one i don't know the height don't really give me away either <laughs> surprisingly so i'm semi-passable um some days i get clocked some days i don't i don't care about getting clocked until i get my darn on titties in it's like now once again, now y'all going to dress me as she heard hers once I get these double D's, honey. But right now, since I got a 32A-ish, and I'm being generous even with saying 32A because I think this ain't even necessarily a breast size just quite yet. But, yeah. This is why I'm here. I'm darn going having to, you know, work a, a humble job trying to slowly build myself up. Meanwhile... Got somebody with a stroke of a pen. And once again, no pressure. No pressure or anything. But the fact is, it did make me feel some type of pissed off and angry for many years. To hear that my siblings were given houses and stuff. And these are siblings that, you know, no shade to them. I'm hearing that some are strung out on drugs and I mean, well, hell, the environment that we grew up in is like you need to go to prostitution, drugs, um, selling it or a combination of a, a multiple of the sorts, honey. Um, it's like to grow up in the area that I grew up in, um, which is the dirty, dirty, the heart of the two six Merkison Road. It's like if if you know, you know, <laughs> and I'm talking about it, it, it's going to cleaned up now, but back in the 90s. Honey, there were certain areas where the police didn't even come to certain streets, honey. You had to run to the next street over if you was in an emergency situation. That's the type of area that I'm in. It's almost like, if for comparison purposes, I would say like Miami-Dade County, Chirac, or Chi-Town as y'all call it up north, um... The Bronx, like, we, we that that's a compare, that's a good equal comparison, honey. So... Some people know it as the dirty, dirty, the two sits the merc. Uh, Fed Nam is usually the most universal term that most people is familiar with. So it's like, yeah, growing up in that hard um, area, um, you either succumb to gang, you know, affiliation, drugs, use prostitution, or like I said, a combination of all of them. So I don't fault my siblings or whatnot because, hell, they was dealt a bad hand to. <laughs> they didn't darn go on. Um, none of us didn't meet this guy until we were all grown. So it was like, yeah, here I was thinking once I realized that you was my biological part, uh, father, I thought that maybe because he was married, which find out he was married multiple times, um, cheated on the woman, not only with the egg donor, but multiple people. So it's not like I was a, a one-off situation. So that's what I thought. I, I was trying to justify, like, why did he never come and darn going to see about me? Is it because you got a family 
and I was the oops baby, and you got this other, like, I thought it was like, okay, I got five different siblings, but the other siblings are by the same woman, and, you know, there's a family unit there versus, you know, here I am is pretty much the bastard child. Like, that's what I was thinking. But it's like, no, you got seven different baby mamas. Seven plus different baby mamas. And somehow you have made it a point to at, at some point have gotten in contact with each and every one of them. And I just got left out the equation. And I'm trying to figure out now, how is that possible? And I'm in Fayetteville. You know who I am at this point. You have known since, um, well, hell, I want to say since pretty much since I was a teenager. Um, but undeniably, you known for at least the better part of, I would say, like four years. Because I think it was 2019, I reached out to one of my cousins um, on Ancestry. And they definitely translated the message um, to you or whatnot. And like I said, my cousin on my maternal side who goes to the family reunions um, every year, I'm sure he's darn on voice the darn on opinions as well. My uncle said he's also voiced the opinion directly to him. And you still have not made an attempt. So it's like, <laughs> the hell with it. I, 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 I don't care. I'm not about to go out my way to build a, 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 a relationship with anybody that don't wants to have a relationship with me. And that's how I got here right now. So, yeah. Now, I, I would be remiss if I still didn't say there wasn't a little bit of resentment there. Because it's like, once again, I think I am at least owed an explanation more than anything. Like, how in the hell do you help out literally every single one of my siblings but me financially? And once again, not to say that I should be entitled, but it's like, if you want to help out any damn sibling, why not? I mean, if you want to help out any one of your children... Why not help out the one that actually has the entrepreneur background? And that's not to throw my other siblings under the bus because I, I would want to at least try to forge some sort of relationship with them. Because I've never had no relationship with any siblings. The one that's from my darn um, maternal side, I don't have a relationship with to this day. Come to find out he's now in jail serving a five-year bid on some bull skin. I got a niece and a nephew that I've never met. And probably never will meet. Because I don't have no plans on going to Maryland. Unless it's for my hair transplant. And even then I don't plan on making no darn on trips to see them specifically. Well hell I couldn't make. I, I can't plan to see him anyways. Because he's in lockup. Because even though he got away from darn on having to be brought up on the mer, He got brought up in darn on Baltimore honey. And you know what Baltimore gives. He, he grew up in the hood streets of Baltimore. So. He was darn on dealt the bad card any damn way, honey. But as far as my paternal uh, father is concerned, my my genetic one is like, you know who I am for over 12 years at the minimum. You are a documented millionaire for the most part because you own at least over 20 some darn on houses and a couple businesses. Yet, and granted, I, I, granted I, I guess he don't necessarily know the full T about me being who I am as far as an esthetician and, you know, and everything that I do. But it's like, once again, who fault is that? Who fault is that? Because for whatever reason, you don't even want to um, have no type of relationship with me. And it's like, I, I, I think I at least am owed an explanation like, It'll be one thing if he was just overtly darn on transphobic or homophobic, but it's like just the not knowing. Like I would rather, if I know directly, at least I can say, okay, this is what it is. But the fact that you are just leaving me just the darn on wonder, I, I I think that is a cruel and unusual punishment. Like how you want to be in the same city as me? And then you this mystery darn on person. So, it, I, I'm, I am thinking about this. If I have to go through the expense of darn on having to darn on hire a private investigator, you don't owe me no child support. You don't owe me any of that. But you will reimburse me for my darn on investigative um, costs because them darn on private investigators aren't cheap. 
A private investigator can cost as much as $150 an hour. Don't worry, you got the money to darn gonna flip it. If you got money to darn gonna give my darn on us uh, uh, sisters darn on houses, you you buying twenty thousand dollar cars and you know you're darn going giving them putting five ten thousand dollars in their bank account. Yeah, I I can't even get so much as a hello. Hello, it's me. Your absentee father to be like I can't even darn gonna get a hello. I can't get a conversation or nothing. I, I, it's like I'm, I'm not least old a conversation. I'm not old a sit down at this point. Oh no, I'm not going out like that. Now, I, 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 for years, I thought about, okay, I'm just going to let it be. It is what it is. But now, as I think about it, it's like, oh no. At the minimal, especially before I leave here because I'm thinking about darn going to relocate now to North Carolina because it's just been too much hurt and pain. And it's like, if I want to strive and do better anyways, it's like I got to change my surroundings anyways. So it's like, I'm ready to get the hell up out of this darn going city. But oh, best believe before I go. Oh, you're going to find out about me. and so I mean, you already know, but you, we, we're going to see each other in some form of capacity. Even if it means that I have to hire a private investigator, which is darn going trifling. This is why I say these motherfuckers ain't shit either. Because it's like, y'all all know where this person is, but y'all intentionally withhold this information from me. And, and and that right there, it's like, honey, if she if if the, if the helper was to die tomorrow, honey, I, I don't give two fucks. I was going to say, hell, you got your other, uh, you got your other child, the dog going to help with Barry, but hell, he's locked up. So now you got the dog on brother. You better hope that he don't snort up your dog on, uh, funeral money. Now she just did her dog on insurance yesterday. Now she up and died. Honey, now you in a dog on fucked up situation. Cause honey, you might be left on ice. Cause I damn sure ain't going to deal with your final expenses. Um, I don't know if your darn old oldest child going to be left out. I'm talking about the egg donor now. And then your uncle, I mean, uh, well, my uncle, your brother, is like, honey, you run the 50-50% chance that he might darn going to snort up the money. And that's your only darn going uh, brother or whatnot, so at least on your maternal side. And then I think the ones on her paternal side is darn going to cease. So where does that leave you? What goes around comes around. But yeah, y'all, that, that is my dynamic. That is my, you know, complicated, darn family background. That's why you don't hear me talk about no siblings or anything like that. Because it's like, I got all these siblings that I don't know. Got this father who, darn on bankrolled all of them and, darn going to pay me, darn on dust. And like I said, the, the, the mitigated gall that I don't even get so much as an explanation. I think I'm at least old that. Like, you ain't got to come out your... Uh, because it's like, it, if you don't went as far as this long to not darn gonna even talk to me, it's like, hell, even if you was to offer, I don't even think it would really come off genuine at this point. So, it's like, you ain't got to do nothing for me. But one thing I am going to demand... And you know what? I think I might forward this video to my cousins or whatnot. But see, now, one of them have deleted their darn on information on darn on Ancestry. Because I thought about reaching out yet again. And now, the profile is deleted. So, hence why I now got to go on to a private investigator. Which I guess would not be too hard because you're in the damn same city as me. The facial features are strong, so it's like, okay, you're obviously looking like you're, you're looking for a male version of me that's darn on 30 years older, so you got a good darn on visual reference to go by. And then you, I mean, now the last name is quite common though, so that might what throw them all a little bit, but it shouldn't be too hard if you if you cross reference darn on other people. And, oh. I might end up having to ask y'all help for this on this one. Don't worry. There will be some reimbursements because, honey, he, he, he's, he, I'm, I'm definitely taking him to court as far as reimbursing this. And once again, it, it shouldn't have came to this point. But like I said, I, I'm, I'm definitely owed some questions. 
you don't owe me not one dime, but you do owe me some Nargon medical stuff. Because as y'all know, I've been dealing with quite a bit of medical stuff. Um, not only for my reconstructive as far as, you know, the HRT and all of that. I'm talking about like serious health issues that I cannot necessarily explain from my maternal side that come from my paternal side. It's like, I, I think that, that it, you know, and granted, I know HIPAA laws prevent you know, for certain information being released. But I think when uh, a person shares 50% of your DNA, I think some laws should be passed where it should be an automatic requirement that if you share 50% DNA, like your offspring should darn going to be made primitive to your medical records. Now, obviously not nothing that doesn't pertain to me. Like obviously if you don't contract the STD or something like that, um, or an uh, injury, uh, I shouldn't be made permanent to that. But as far as like hereditary genetic conditions, um, it's something that you can pass down to somebody. Like, for example, I got a darn on sickle cell variant that I did not know until a, a few years ago. Now, come to find out that that's from my maternal side or whatnot. Um, but I, I, I carry a sickle cell trait. Um, and unbeknownst to me, I never knew because the thing is this, with sickle cell, as long as you just carry one trait, you don't actually uh, have the symptoms of sickle cell. So I'm a sickle cell carrier, but I do not suffer from sickle cell. But if I was to get with somebody that also has a sickle cell trait, our darn on child is liable to have sickle cell anemia, which, you know, would be drastic. It is like that's something that, you know, you don't want to put on no baby or anything. And if you can avoid it, you want to avoid that at all costs. So once again, the importance of darn on getting DNA tests, even if you don't have to worry about your spouse being your potential cousin like me, I end up almost making out with my first cousin because of this darn on situation right here. But even situations like that where, you know, you carry like sickle cell and the other person might carry sickle cell or something like that. Um, you might, you, you definitely want to be continents of something like that. But yeah, as far as this darn going, um, father situation is concerned, um, I don't know if I might do a GoFundMe or whatnot. Cause like I said, uh, a private investigator is not cheap. And even though Diva Wine has gotten some money a little bit, honey, and YouTube is starting to pay me a little bit more money than normal and regular. And hell, even my video tonight, y'all, let's see how uh, much the view count done got up now. Oh my God, I, I can't believe I'm up to 1,300 views in two hours. That That is freaking amazing. But still, that's not enough, Dargon. <laughs> Corn, honey. That's still, you know, when it's all said and done, Diva Wine only gets maybe like $100 every month to a two months. So that's just a little, little side spending money or whatnot. So that ain't even enough to really pay no bill or nothing. But um, yeah, y'all, if I end up doing like a GoFundMe, you know, I appreciate the support. It's going to be the Dargon, um, Sue the Dargon Trifling Egg um, Sperm Donor Fund. We got to come up with a fancy name for it. It's going to be the Sue the Dargon Sperm Donor Fund. And it's going to be Dargon to get Dargon medical information. Because once again, I think this shit should be the law. I'm, I'm surprised that it ain't the law that, you know, your your children should be made primitive to any sort of hereditary conditions that you pass down. I should automatically know also every single darn on child that you have out there. Because it's like, I, I could be walking past my sister and not even know it. And then these trifling darn on crackheaded motherfuckers think it's a, a, it's a joke to say, oh yeah, one of your sisters darn gonna walk up and down the street on the prostitute trail or whatnot. And you just say this shit so jokingly. Like, I could darn all be passing my sister on the street. And sadly, you know, she's in an area of her life where she darn gonna have to turn to prostitution. And I don't even know that this person is related to me. Like, once again, the darn gonna level of fucked upness that these darn gonna people this are. Like, like, this is why I don't care to have no relationship with none of these fuckers. But in the minimum, I'm owed some damn answers. So... Yeah, y'all, we want to try to get a private investigator. And I'm going to get every bit of answers that I darn on deserve. Even, um, down to 
you know, pictures of my siblings and all. That. Now, granted, you know, for privacy purposes, we ain't going to put their information out on Front Street or whatnot. Now, as far as the doggone sperm don't, I don't so much care about his doggone privacy and shit at this point. I don't owe you no goddamn leniency or grace at this point of the game. Now, my siblings, however, I do. But as far as you, oh, no, you fair game. So, yeah, that is it, y'all. That is my complicated doggone family relationship. Uh... That's how I almost made out with my cousin. All because of a rolling stone of a darn on millionaire father who does not want the darn on claim me at all. Who done kept this distance. And for whatever reason, the darn on um, egg donor went along with this shit. And, you know, I, I was just left the darn on suffer from, you know, medical ailments and stuff that I could have been made primitive to ahead of time. If I was doggone made fully aware of my full genetic history on both sides of my family. And wasn't under the false belief that this person that is my oldest brother's father was also my father as well. So, yeah, that's Steven Wan's complicated uh, family back... Well, relative background because, honey, these folk, these helpers I would not consider family war for damn. Like I said, they can burn the hell out like here after I get the answers that I'm entitled to. But that is it, y'all. Y'all feel free to thumbs up, comment. Hell, I well, hell, I probably don't even have to say comment because, honey, I'm sure y'all got quite the comments to say about this. It's understandable. Um, and like I said, look out for the go for me if it's on your heart to donate to a girl or whatnot. Because, like I said, and hell, like I said, it's not really a donate because it's more like I probably would stick it to them in a way where it. Uh, you know, I'm going to keep a track of the donations. And y'all are all get it back in threefold. Now, I don't want to necessarily make the promise. So, we'll just set it up as a donation uh, just to be on the safe side. But I definitely am going to strong arm him um, to say, okay, well, it took me darn on $10,000 worth of expenses to darn go and get a hold to you. Um, you're going to cover this cost. Plus, you're going to cover every single donation cost times darn on three. Um, so I can give it back to the folks three times as fold. That's the least you can do. In, in, in place of, you know, the house that I, you know, you didn't give me, honey. The nor the cars and everything else. Or even darn gonna be an angel investor. Like, I'm willing to work for my darn on money. Like, you just gave it to all my other siblings. It's like, you gonna, you literally came on as an angel investor and darn gonna literally made your money back with me. And hell, I might still welcome the opportunity. Like, we don't have to have a father-daughter relationship or anything. This can darn on uh, simply be a business transaction once I get my medical stuff first. Because that's most important is for me to be on top of my health. But, it, and, you know, I, I wouldn't be opposed to still having a, a business relationship with the person. Because, once again, Diva Wan is sick and tired of darn on <laughs> living darn on busted and, you know, having a struggle or whatnot. So I'm not going to be foolish enough to darn on turn down, you know, a good investment or whatnot. Um, especially, you know, I don't, I wouldn't have to go through no uh, serious underwriting because, you know, in lieu of all the shit that you put me through, yeah, we, we can darn on let credit checks and shit slide. You can just look at my darn on history, my reputation, um, or whatnot. So I'll pull up, you know, my clientele list and you will know that you're making a good investment and you know we can set percentages that you will have and i have the rights to buy back the little bit of percentages after you make so much money because honey you wouldn't never have no full you know perpetual because i know that once i get my business up there my business is going to take off um so initially i would be willing to give up to like 33 percent of my company but there will be a clause that after you make so much of your money back, like if you make like three times your investment back, um, your equity is diluted down to like, let's say 5%. And then I have the option at any given time to buy out your 5% equity because I want to be a hundred percent, you know, so, you know, I want my business to be a hundred percent black owned by me. Now, granted, I guess, you know, it would still be black-owned in general with the investor, considering that, obviously, they're my parent and, you know, they're black or whatnot. Uh, but still, I wanted to be on solo dolo, honey. Let it be women-owned business, honey. We Yeah, you, you, you just the angel investor. 
And hell, I can't even necessarily say an angel because it ain't nothing angel about you in this darn on fucked up darn on description. But you know, you can be archeristic and still darn on come out the coins anyways on the business tip. We'll negotiate on that uh, when the time comes. But first and foremost, we're going to get the medical situations out of the way. Um, in addition to darn on me finding out about my siblings. So, yeah, that's the plan in addition <laughs> to everything that I got going on this year, y'all. So, in between me traveling, in between my surgeries, both the, you know, health surgeries I got to deal with in condition to the HRT surgeries, we also going to finally, darn on, um, encounter this sperm donor and hold him to task. So, y'all wish me luck on that. Um, like I said, anybody who supports in that journey, I definitely appreciate it. I'm going to make it a point to darn on return the favor, either by returning your, you know, your donation three times as full, or, you know, I can exchange your donation for skincare products once we get the business up and running up off the ground. But I will keep y'all abreast of the situation. So in the meantime, in between time, feel free to like, comment, share, and subscribe. And I'm going to wish y'all a good night, or more so a good morning, because it just turned 12 o'clock. So... Good night, y'all.